Hello, Zion families. This is Rebecca and my dog, Jip. We are here to share with you some things that we learned this week about today's gospel reading and also about a saint named Thomas. A few things we learned about him. So today's lesson is about John the Baptist and the truth that he was a witness to testify to the light who was Jesus Christ so that all might believe through Jesus. So John the Baptist is telling the folks, he's not the Messiah and he's not the light. Instead, he came as a witness to tell the truth about what was happening in the world. So the gospel according to John chapter one, verses six through eight, and then continuing with 19 through 28. Chip, will you start reading? I sure will. I sure will. I sure will. Uh, so there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is a testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then he said to him, who are you? Uh, let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had all, they had all been sent from the Pharisees and they asked him, why then are you baptizing if, you need, if you're neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I will baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. The one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Gospel of the Lord. So people sometimes wonder why we read our Bibles and we reread the same stories of people like Jonah and Elijah and John the Baptist. I think we reread through a simple lens sometimes, just like we go into the garden in the early spring and check the flower beds. We're constantly going back to check to see if there's something new that has grown. Each time we approach scripture, we, we can see something else, kind of like going in those flower beds. Something we weren't focused on at first, like how the garden will have something new even if it's just a little bit new. Sometimes we don't see things the first time and they have to be revealed another time. It's one of the reasons why we repeat certain lessons in different seasons or in the same seasons year after year. Like every year we will hear something about um, baby, the baby Jesus, we'll hear something about Mary, um, and different things like that. So sometimes we don't see things the first time, and they have to be revealed another time. Like when we fold a piece of origami, you know, the goal is to transform a flat piece of square paper into a finished sculpture through folding and sculpting techniques, kind of like building a bridge, but with paper. Uh, we can't see what it will be until it's finished. Yeah, revealing new facets each time we approach it. Uh, it's kind of like how we read scripture. And 
It may be the same passage read at various times for various reasons, but each time we approach it, we learn something new. Or if we don't learn something new, we're reminded of what might be already familiar to us, which is a good thing. I think that's the kind of like what John's doing here. He's bringing truth to the people and he's the one who's making the way straight for the Lord. The text is really simple and it starts out simple. There was a man sent by God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. So that when the word of God enters the world, people definitely have something to say about it, don't they? John is a witness who comes forward to verify the truth of Jesus, that he's the son of God, that Jesus is the son of God and the savior of the world, and he is the way to the Father. But John is not telling the people quite that yet in this text. He's telling them he's not a prophet like Elijah or Isaiah. He's a messenger. He's a messenger of Jesus who they don't quite know him yet, do they? John the Baptist is one of these witnesses. Another, another witness is what we'll find out about is next week is um, uh, Mary. So John's a forerunner. He's a messenger to Jesus and he speaks directly to the people who are the leaders in the community. Jesus is the one who's coming after me, he says. I'm not worthy to untie his sandals. So part of John's message, part of John's message is that he denies his own significance. He's not trying to run the show, is he? John's main role is to glorify and to point to Jesus. So John recognizes that God's work to send Jesus is generous that generosity will result in theirs and our salvation. Grace is not only part of who God is. Grace is known when we enjoy God's goodness. John's not telling the people about a regular old message that offers hope, not just the ordinary news story here. He's telling the people about the message that is the only, only hope it's not about an idea, but it's about the person who's the son of God. John sees that he can't do this. Only Jesus can. The word became flesh tells us that God wants to tell us about himself. Not ideas, not ideas about himself. And he wants to bring us back into relationship with him. So, you know, we're members of the communion of saints and we strive to remember the truths and to act upon the truths that people like John the Baptist were telling the people and Mary and even and and even the others all the other saints even in anonymous ways ordinary Christian saints and the church teaches us that the people like John are not only made for his glory, but they're also serving God in small ways and big ways by themselves and ourselves and in community with one another. So this week, we're going to share what we learned about the Apostle Thomas. So his life is remembered or it's commemorated on December 21st in the Episcopal calendar of the church year. The Gospel of John tells us that Thomas was one of 12 disciples. And when Jesus rose from the dead, he was not with the other disciples when Jesus came to them. So the other disciples told Thomas, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. So a week goes by and his disciples were again at the house and Thomas was with them. 
And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands and reach out your hand and put it in my side and, and don't doubt, but believe. So Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Something we learned about Thomas and his example is he endured in his faith in Jesus, even when it wasn't easy and even when he doubted. He hung in there with God's help. He didn't shrink back and he was accepting of the assurance that Jesus gave him when he was able to see him. So remember, I think, or I think one thing to remember is that Thomas was actually very brave. During Jesus' ministry, Thomas boldly urged his fellow disciples to go with Jesus to Bethany and Judea, despite the dangers that they would face. Thomas needed proof to believe. It wasn't necessarily a bad thing. He did believe. He did believe when Jesus appeared to him and the other disciples that week later. Thomas responds to Jesus' appearance by by proclaiming his faith, my Lord and my God. Sometimes we focus on Thomas doubting all the time, but it's a, I think it's important to remember that he did believe. So the collect for St. Thomas the Apostle prays this, our, or part of it prays this, our, that our faith may never be found wanting, which means that our faith may never be lacking in anything. So these are some things that we learned this week about Thomas and about John the Baptist's message to Je about Jesus to the people asking him who he was. And he was not Jesus, he was not the, the Messiah, but he was pointing to the Messiah. And I think that's something for us to take away is that we should always be pointing to Jesus and not so much ourselves. I think so. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to next week's lesson when we'll share what we learned from chapter one in Luke uh, when Gabriel announces to Mary that she'll be the mother of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a happy advent, don't you think? Getting very close to Christmas. Bye-bye, Zion. Bye-bye, Zion. And we will see you next week.